On today's Locked On Senators, Ottawa stays perfect in the shootout. They beat the Tampa Bay Lightning 3-2. to two. And as you're listening to this, Ross and I are making the journey so that we can be boots on the ground for the home closer up against the Montreal Canadiens. We'll have a full preview of that game and the Belleville Sens officially decide their own playoff fate. All that and more coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators Podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Welcome inside episode 1023 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, you can follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows that when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. Today is Friday, April 12th, and Pillsy, if only all 82 games were decided by shootout. Yeah, I mean, Ross, I know you hate the shootout. You have your qualms, but I keep telling you, the Ottawa Senators. (laughs) Yeah, when did Ross say he ever hates the shootouts? No continuous overtime. Shootout right away after regulation, right? That's no, shootout after shoot up after warm up. Yeah, true. Just warmies get uh, get the boys going, and then just quick shootout decide it, nice and easy. That would make the season go by a lot quicker. And the Ottawa Senators would probably be in a playoff spot as they are now a perfect four and zero in the shootout. I mean. It's been a, it's, that's surprising though, Ross, not because I don't believe in the offensive talent of this team, but I mean, you look at the goaltending and you wouldn't think they'd be able to hold things up here. Forzy's perfect. He hasn't even allowed a single goal in the shootout. Yeah, I think uh, Gordon Miller said on the broadcast, uh, I don't know if this is as a Sen or career or what, but in his last 12, Forzy's 11 for 12. So that's pretty good. No. Oh yeah. That's solid. I I appreciate that. Hey. Be good. That's something. Anton Forsberg is 4-0 and in the shootout, and that's this year's stat. So he's 11 for 12 this year in the okay. shootout, a 917 save percentage. He has a better shootout when it's him against the shooter than he does in a game situation. That's wild. We got another shootout note later on in the show, but I want to pick up on the game. Pilsy and Martian got their takes out on the postcast. Go check that out if you missed it last night. But I'm just excited to see the milestones coming in. Brady Kachuk ties his career high in goals. He gets his 35th of the season. And then Drake Batherson sets a career mark with his 63rd point of the season. A beautiful play there as well. And credit to Ottawa. They score first, give it up right away, trail for a good part of the game, but then are able to tie it up. So I like that they're not quitting. At the first part of the game, I thought that it was like a very – lackluster performance but they turned it up in the third period enough to tie the game yeah and i mean ross uh, i believe drake batherson or he's already matched and passed his goals uh yeah high in goals right so yeah this is this has been a solid little stretch here for drake batherson and brady kachuk keeps on chugging along as the the captain is dragging this team into battle with him and you know he's get he showed up Last night, Ross, you know he's going to show up up against the Habs last home game of the season. And there was a little animosity in this Lightning game. And Brandon Hagel hit Brady with the chirp that that hurts the most as a captain. Sens fans, we have to deal with it. But see you in the playoffs. And that's a tough one. But Brady 
has the last laugh in this game, at least, as he's the reason he scores the opening goal and he scores the only goal in the shootout. Brady's first shootout attempt, and he scores it of the season. So you love to see that. Hey, all Brady had to do was remind him, hey, buddy, everybody except you has a ring on this team. Yeah, I mean, that's also fair. Yeah. You were sitting in Chicago right on the sidelines as well. Brandon Hagel was all bark, no bite. Right when it was time to actually get in the mix, he was nowhere to be seen. Oh, well, that's what Marshall was saying. Like, yeah, easy for a guy to toss those chirps when he's behind the linesman and behind a, a guy on the faceoff. Like, we'll see how that goes if he would, didn't have someone in front of him. Wouldn't be good for Hagel, I can tell you. No, that. it wouldn't be good at all. For Brandon Hagel, I don't think, but credit to credit to the Ottawa Senators for battling. I actually do appreciate that. My parents were in attendance, so they were able to get that done. I'm I'm looking up right now. Did he? Am I making myself look like an idiot right now? Uh oh. Nope. They lost. Thank goodness. I was like, Brandon Hagel didn't win a Stanley Cup. They lost in the finals to Colorado. Woo. Sunk. Phew. I was really nervous there, but I do appreciate the good performances that we saw tonight. And I hope they continue because if there's one game that I'd like them to win, it's that home closer and make it nine straight wins against the Montreal Canadians going back to, to when Colin white was scoring goals for the Ottawa senators scoring goals. Watson score. Yeah. Austin Watson opened the scoring for Ottawa in that game. On April 5th, 2022 was the first of eight straight wins. And we got to make it nine. We got to make it double digits at this point. And look, Montreal got one point last night. Ottawa got two. So now Ottawa is one point ahead of Montreal. I think it's pretty split. We'll put up a poll today on Twitter at Send Central. Do you want Montreal at this point in the season to finish ahead of Ottawa? So you get that one spot higher in the draft? Or do you prefer bragging rights? and having Ottawa finish ahead of the rebuilding Montreal Canadiens. Pilsy, what is your answer? I'll take the bragging rights, and I know it's pathetic, but it's all we got. Like, you, you want something? Raise the banner. The Ottawa Senators finish ahead of the Montreal Canadiens in the 2023-2024 season. Go ahead, Habs fans. Laugh it up. But that would be a nice little, uh, at least a nice little something. For the Senators. So I'll take that, Ross. Even though I know it's much better for the future of this franchise to finish worse and have better draft lottery odds. Who starts in goal for you on Saturday night? Anton Forsberg gets the win and he gets the Ottawa fire helmet yep. from Jake Sanderson, keeping it on the back end. Well Who starts in goal for you Saturday night? Well, Looking at across to the Montreal Canadiens, Ross, um, Kate, no, Sam Montembeau started for them. So it, I'm going to assume we're going to see Caden Primo. Who knows? But I think I, I think I go Corpy. I think I go okay. Corpy. Me too. Not, not, you- not with a lot of confidence. Like if they went Forsberg, I'd be like, okay, he's been playing decent as of late other than a couple stinkers here and there <laughs> other than every other game that he gets pulled yeah but then he, like he mixed in a shutout uh he had a nice game up against tampa here where he made big big saves oh, in the sh- the save on uh brayden point in overtime and then keep going the save on him in the shootout where brayden point beats him but forzy keeps that glove held high and he uh makes the save even though he's down and out so yeah forzy was really good so Either either way, I wouldn't mind. Actually, you know what? No, I'm changing my answer. Put Forzy in. He's been hot. Let him battle it out here. Okay, let us know in the comments who should start in goal on Saturday against Montreal. We'll have more on that game after the break. How the Belleville Sens officially control their own fate. And Jakob Silverberg is hanging them up. We'll look back at what was honestly, considering he only played 48 games in Ottawa, pretty eventful. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Ross. New sponsor alert. Here we go. New, new sponsor. Sponsor alert. 
and it is Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. You want to save time, you want to save money these days, and you want to provide your family with a financial safety net, and you can do that starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Now, Policy Genius helps you compare all your options from all the best insurance companies, and they've got a team of experts so that they can help you through it. Award winning agents are going to make this process easy for you. You can compare quotes from top insurers all the, around the country and a couple clicks, and you can find the lowest price. You want to make sure you're covered, and Policy Genius will give you unbiased advice from a licensed expert team. And you want to check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. Go visit the Glebe Central Pub for great food, awesome drinks, and an atmosphere that will keep you coming back. Go visit them at 779 Bank Street. They're right in the middle of the Glebe, and they always have something going on at the pub, whether it's live music, whether it's trivia night, or whether you're just going there to watch the hockey game or going there specifically for wing night. I do that. My record is 1820. I'm around that when I'm getting into the wing nights, but you can always count on Glebe Central Pub for getting you in the mix. Wing night on Mondays at the Glebe Central Pub. They've also got the shuttle going for the game tomorrow, Saturday against the Montreal Canadiens. So get on the bus, let the wheels go round and round and have Sue bring you to and from the CTC. The bus leaves an hour and 15 minutes before the game and will bring you right back to keep the good times rolling at the Glebe Central Pub. The vibes are free at the GCP, and when I say it, I mean it. We keep hearing from citizens that go check out the Glebe Central Pub, and they tell us how much they love it, how they feel so inclusive when they're there, not like everybody's just at their own table. Everybody's interacting with one another, having a great time at the Glebe Central Pub. So go visit them today. Glebe Central Pub at 779 Bank Street and online at GlebeCentralPub.com. The vibes are free at the GCP. All right, Pilsy. Here we are getting ready to put the season to bed. Only three games remain, one on home ice tomorrow against Montreal, and then they will be on the road at Madison Square Garden before wrapping up the season, second half of a back-to-back in Boston on Tuesday. Pilsy, I'm just looking at my phone here. I'm getting a little tweet concocted up because Brady Kachuk's shootout winner was absolutely gorgeous. It looked like he'd done it before, right? Uh, I mean, it looked like he'd done it before. Marsh and I were saying that seemed like a new move for him, though, because usually he goes in on the shootout and just rips it or goes uh, backhand five-hole. Can you see that stat right there? First career shootout goal. All right. He was 0 for 6 Oh, in yeah, the Marsh did mention that. Yeah, damn. Before... That that was a beautiful goal, backhand upstairs. Timmy that must little, have been showing him a little something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That little curl of the wrist to do to drag it to his backhand and then roof it. Woo, it was beautiful. But yeah, usually when you see Brady on a breakaway, he just rips it or he tries that little backhand move, open up the five hole and tuck it in. So this was something new, and it worked. Brady Kachuk gets the shootout winner, and the Sens have an opportunity. To finish off the season really remarkably strong against the Atlantic Division. I know it doesn't count for anything. But if you look at the way that the Senators played against the Atlantic Division this year, it just makes you shake your head even more. There's so many stats this year that just make you shake your head at how bad they are in the standings. Like, I'm going to find the exact numbers by the end of the show here because I'm just, I'm going to be perplexed by it. And Ottawa actually has two more divisional games left, but. 
Like they've won the season series against most of the teams. They've already won it yeah. against Montreal. Kind of a shame. They only three games against Montreal this year. I like four for the actual division rivals. Like give us three games against Florida, please. Please. Yeah. Maybe. I'm down for that. And Ross, it's especially frustrating when you take a look at how the league is kind of constructed now and they're trying to put so much emphasis on division rivalries and the way the playoffs are, are set up. It, it really stokes up the division rivalries. Well, look where the Ottawa Senators season went down the tube, all on the road against Western Conference teams. Like that's yep. that was the story of the Ottawa Senators season. Whereas when they're playing up against the division teams that they're supposed to be uh, kind of measuring with, they're beating them. So that's where it's it's really tough if you're a Sens fans and you, and you kind of know that underlying backstory that just makes this season it makes you shake your head even more. The Ottawa Senators will be eulogized properly right here on the LOSP. Oh, yeah. We've done Sens eulogies. But not yet. No. Let's discuss the game on Saturday. It's going to be a great atmosphere at the Canadian Tire Center. I love the feeling at the end of the year. I know that it's disappointing, and it has been in the past, but we always go for those last handful of games, and they're always uplifting it makes you realize why we love the sends and love hockey it's the atmosphere around the rink and just the people that make it what it is so i'm really excited for us to get to ottawa have a good dinner together and then on saturday get to the rink early and make sure we're having some fun because uh oh, yeah. we're gonna miss it no matter how poorly this season went and especially versus expectations just horrible but it's yeah. still something that you're going to miss when it when it's gone. And there will be major changes, I believe, on the ice before next season. So we're almost saying goodbye to a, to a sub-era because I don't think the entire era, Brady Kachuk, I believe, will be an Ottawa Senator going forward despite what other fans of other teams think. Yeah, I'm a real, real connoisseur of the game of hockey. Keep Brady Kachuk. The crowd goes wild. But in all seriousness, I do think that that it should almost be like an extension of fan appreciation night at the uh, at the game, and hopefully the Sens give us uh, an, an important performance because I can't I can't leave that building after a loss to the Habs. I won't. I'll stay there until they change the score. Yeah, that's that's a good call, Ross. I I appreciate that, and uh, <laughs> Sens fans will as well. I'm sure the Canadian Tire Center will love to have another resident uh, hanging out in uh, in the arena. And look, the home closer, it's an interesting vibe because I feel like the Sens are always well out of it at that point. Obviously, meaningful games. What is that? We don't know what they are. So the people that go to the home closer, like those are the real ones. And then especially you combine that with the Habs being well out of it. So the, the collection of Habs and Sens fans that meet at those games, like those are the diehards that are still interested in their teams uh, this late in the season when there's nothing on the line other than the fan base's pride ironically the first time you and I ever went to a Sens game together was a meaningful game late in the season. They were playing the Rangers in 2017 and little did we know that a month later they would be playing the Rangers in the second round of the playoffs. Yeah. Ross, that was like a million years ago though, where the the Seven. last, the end of the season games meant something. Jeez. Yeah. You got a locked on player for us for tomorrow night. Yes, I do. Uh, my locked on player is going to be the captain, number seven, Brady Kachuk. I mean, like, how can you not be locked on to the, this guy recently, Ross? Like, it, even I'll put it just a random sample size since April. So uh, the Minnesota Wild game that we were at, he's been getting points in every single game except the games up against Matthew Kachuk and the Florida Panthers, where no senators got any points. They were outscored 8 nothing in those games. So Brady is just the perfect example of leading by example. Like, I'm not sure if he's maybe the biggest rah-rah speech guy or like, you know, get mad kicking the garbage can across the room or things like that. But I just feel like he's like, look, if these are the expectations I set for myself and I expect everyone else to to at least be striving to meet those expectations as well. Cause he doesn't take a night off and he kind of had his ego on the line with Brandon Hagel, uh, chirping him about the playoffs thing. 
And he said, I'm, I'm not going to take that lightly. Let's go get this win here. He scores the opening goal and he scores the only goal in the shootout. So what a legend, Brady Kachuk. Every game we get to watch him as an Ottawa Senator, which will hopefully be hundreds more, is a, is a sight to behold and something Sense fans should be very grateful for. Should I have Tim Stutzel as my lockdown player just to kind of will him back? Because I'd love for him to be in the lineup. I know we almost said like, hey, save him for the weekend game. But now that it's on the horizon, I'm kind of worried because he hasn't practiced with a normal contact jersey. Maybe later today. We'll see. But I don't know if Timmy's going to like if he doesn't play at home or no, they're not even skating on Friday. It's going to be a 10.30 a.m. morning skate on Saturday. If he doesn't play Saturday, I think you just shut him down for the season. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And that would just be so saddening because I feel like Habs fans are obsessed with Tim Stutzla too, so it kind of keeps the, the emotions high there. And, Ross, there's a reason why I didn't pick Tim Stutzla as my locked-on player. I was going to. But I am. it's uncanny how often I mush locked-on and lookout players like my lookout player for the Tampa game was Anthony Duclair, late, late day scratch, stomach flu. <laughs> like, Dude, and it? and when I talked about the Belleville Senators, their goalies Matt Sogard and Mando need to be the number one uh, reason why they win. Levy Marilina gets a start, so I I'm not touching that for superstition's sake. That's very fair. Why yeah. don't I give you another one? Why don't really? I give you? Drake Batherson, because again, that top line's been everything. I was going to go either Batherson or Pinto, because I mean, the Senators are kind of shrinking down to about a one line team right now, the way things are up front. Uh, Two goals away from 30. I think that would be so sweet for him to get to, because he was on pace for it before Aaron Dell got in the way before the All Star game two years ago. He had 17 and, well, remember, he, he came back and he wasn't the same, right? I mean, a high ankle sprain that'll that'll change things for as far as skating goes, at least for a while. Yeah, because he came back, and after he came back from that, he had four goals in fifteen games. And he's even said as much, right? Like we've heard him uh, recently after that stretch be like, "I feel like I'm on the other side of this ankle injury," and we saw the results change. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with Drake Batherson. I think thirty goals that would he'd need two goals over the next three games. I think it's doable, it's attainable, but it's gonna take a lot. I'm going to go with Drake Batherson as my locked on player. Nice. Love it. Seven o'clock puck drop Canadian tire center boots on the ground at send central on Twitter, locked on dot senators on Instagram. You can follow along with us there on the other side, the Belleville sends officially control their own fate and a Senators legend. I say that because I have his Jersey has retired following this season. That's all next year on locked on senators, your team. Every day. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at Factor. Guys, eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. 120 seconds, that's it. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 different options. They got Calorie Smart. Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan, and Veggie. And you can have so many add-ons as well. They got breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages, so you can stay fueled and feel good all day long. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes, so you can get back to doing what you love. Looking for gourmet meals? They got premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. No fuss, no mess meals. That's the factor way tailored to your schedule, customize weekly meals with flexibility so you can get as much or as little as you need. You can pause or reschedule your deliveries as much as you need as well. So head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off for your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is still active. Check it out today, guys. Factor. Today's episode is also brought to you by Indeed. Are you building a team full of talented employees? Well, when you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform that you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. 
Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. You can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. You can join the 3 million businesses worldwide that are using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Indeed knows when you're growing your business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. So visit them at Indeed.com slash locked on. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available to everybody. You need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, Pilsy, here we are bringing you into the weekend as we make our way to Ottawa. I do have the stat, by the way. The Senators have played 23 games against the Atlantic Division. They have 12 wins, 9 losses, and 2 overtime losses. So they're 12-9-2 against the Division. They're 0-3-0 against the Florida Panthers. Yeah, and there's still one more game up against the Habs to be had. So, well, and Boston as well. Yeah, uh, I'm more counting uh, a game up against the Habs as a victory more than the Bruins, though, Ross. <laughs> That's fair. They do <laughs> not have any wins against Florida or Boston, but they've only played Boston twice, and one of those games went to overtime. So, nice. there's that. Okay. No overtime tonight in the American Hockey League. The Belleville Sens got some help on the out-of-town scoreboard that allow them to now control their own destiny. Belleville sits in the final playoff spot with 74 points and five games remaining. The team that's chasing them, nipping at their heels, it's the Laval Rocket, who are two points back, but are now two less games to play because they fell tonight to Cleveland six to four. So that's a great sign for Belleville going into a tough weekend where they're going to take on the Rochester Americans who are sitting in third place in the division. Yeah. And Ross, the Rochester Americans are red hot. They're eight, one, Oh, and one in their last 10 and seven, Oh, Oh, and one in their last eight. So like they've been crushing it here. So the, uh, the Belleville senators have their work cut out for them. And both of those games are in Rochester. So, Got to get some road wins here, boys. Let's go. Got to, but they do still control their destiny. And two of Laval's final three games are against Belleville. So those are going to be huge games, not this weekend, but next, the weekend of the April 19th and 20th. So April 19th is great too, because it's the one night between the regular season and the NHL playoffs. So all eyes will be on Laval and Belleville. Really looking forward to that, Pillsy. We need playoff hockey like I need air to breathe. And I'm hoping that the Belleville Sens can come through here. Any final thoughts on today's show, Pilsy? I've got one, but I'll let you go at it first. Uh, well, not so much a final thought, but I'll, I'll give a lookout player. How about that? Sure. Does that work for you? Okay. Uh, Ross, you and I were talking about this guy before. It is insane that Mike Matheson has 60 points this year. 10 goals, 50 assists with the Montreal Canadiens like that completely popped off the page for me when I was looking through their team stats and he's on a six game point streak a six game assist streak where he has nine assists in that span so Mike Matheson that's a guy I'm going to be uh, looking out for especially when if the Montreal Canadiens get on the power play he's kind of quarterbacking it back there so gonna be looking out for him okay I'm going to be looking out for Arbor Jack. Oh, no, he's out. Not going to play. Um, no uh, Wi-Fi. Been... Disconnected. Disconnected. Um, my lookout player will be Nick Suzuki, actually. I think Suzuki's actually been playing some really good hockey of late. I could have gone with Slavkovsky as well. He's looking like the part of a number one overall pick. He has been playing lights out yep. since being re-put um, on that line with Suzuki and Caulfield. But yeah, you look at Nick Suzuki, he went four straight games without a point in the middle of uh, January. And since then, he has 41 points in 37 games. So uh, I'll give a little shout out to Nick Suzuki there. We also have a shout out to give 
at the end of this show. A former senator announced today that he's hanging them up. And I've decided that I can build this in to the little the little nugget, the little trivia that we like to do at the end of our Locked On Senators. And that is Jakob Silverberg. Ooh, ah. Uh, Silverberg. I still remember when he signed. It was after he'd won a championship in the SHL. He was a yep. second round pick, and we're like, he's going to push Ottawa over the edge. Well, guess what? He got here in time for game six, but was jet lagged, so they held him out. Do you remember who played in his spot? Mark Stone. Another youngster, Mark Stone, wearing number 60. Didn't just play, but had a feathered assist to Jason Spezza yeah. on, I believe, the only goal of the game. I think it was a one nothing shutout win. If not, it was 2 nothing. but that was the game-winning goal. So everyone's like, well, Mark Stone should play again, right? Yeah. No, they went with Silverberg. So very interesting. That didn't cost them the series, but it is an interesting piece of Sen's lore. Now, Jakob Silverberg, 48 games with Ottawa. Really not that eventful when, when you really think about it. But he did have that moment. I tweeted it out at Sen Central. The goal he scored right after the line brawl was like the perfect cherry on top. It was 3-1 in the game. Yeah. Then Ottawa scored a goal to make it 4-1. Full line brawl. And Ottawa gets the opening face off in the offensive zone after it on a power play. Skate, stick, back of the net. And it's it's 5-1. Just like that. It goes from 3-1 to 5-1 with a complete gong show in the middle of the ice between it. That's how I'm going to remember Jakob Silverberg. Yeah, and uh, Ross, that's perfect leading into a Sens Habs game here because uh, that's the ultimate moment. And that's the ultimate, like, okay, we just scored on you. Take that. Okay, you want a full line brawl where the Sens beat the living crap out of all five of you? There you go as well. Oh, uh, just to, just for good measure, let's score one more goal quickly after that as well. So, like, that's if you're a Sens fan and you got to witness that, it doesn't get much better than that. And Ross, one more thing quickly about Jakob Silverberg. Every single post or people referencing his retirement that I've seen specifically say retiring from the NHL. Makes Have you sense. noticed that? So I think he's definitely going back to Sweden and is going to lace him up in the SHL. Because normally they just say retired or retiring, but all of them specifically said from the NHL. So you got to think there's a, a couple logs left on the fire here and he's going to play back home for a bit. He was the captain his last year in the SHL as well. He was also the captain of the world championship team for Sweden just last year, but seven goals in 78 games, a far cry from a guy who was consistently a 20 goal scorer at the peak of his career uh, and a point per game guy with the Binghamton senators in his one year here. The last thing I've got to say about Jakob Silverberg, and here's a little nugget for you all. Out of all Ottawa Senators, and it's great timing because I had this that I wanted to say this before tonight's game went to a shootout. Last night's game went to a shootout. Um, Jakob Silverberg, among all Sens shooters with at least five shootout attempts, he has the highest scoring percentage. 57%. He scored on four out of seven shootout goals. Second is Tim Stutzla, who is 50-50. Third is Mika Zabanajad at 46 0.4%. Oh, what could have been a line of Mika Zibanejad between Jakob Silverberg and Daniel Alfredson. They played a bit together, oh, but not enough. That'd be an epic Swedish, Swedish line. Wow. They played together for, for a good por, par, part of that pesky send season. So unfortunate that it didn't work out that way. Hey, that game where Silverberg scored against the Habs, like has Montreal beaten Ottawa since then? I'm going to guess no. Oh, yeah, they definitely have. Oh, <laughs> damn. Dude, that was 2013. Ottawa lost yeah. a playoff series to them since then. Yeah, true, true. I mean, Ross, forgive me. Under it just seems like my only recent memory is Sens beating the Habs. So you can't blame me there. Have fun this weekend, Sens fans. If you see us, say hi. Really appreciate yep. everybody for reaching out and liking the videos, commenting, all that. Look, I know it's kind of the doldrums of the season, but we're here to put a smile on, and uh, draft talk is very soon coming. For tonight, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. <laughs>